Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing automated RSpec tests. This is the first video in a series of videos yet to come, which will be detailing and guiding on how to write RSpec automated tests. So for those who don't know what RSpec is, a really nuts and bolt overview of RSpec is that it is almost like saying it's the equivalent to JUnit in Java, with RSpec being a testing framework for Ruby. So since this is the first video for my RSpec testing series, today we're going to have a look at how to set up your environment for RSpec. Now something to note, installing RSpec on a Windows operating system such as mine and a Linux operating system which mine isn't are slightly different. So this video is going to cover installation for a Windows based operating system. So one of the first things we will need to do is download the necessary Ruby installers, download an IDE, get them both effectively talking to each other and at the end we'll write a very basic RSpec test just to make sure that everything is working. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is just go ahead and download what's called the Ruby installer. This effectively will install Ruby on our machines. So to do that we'll just uh, go to Google and just say download a Ruby installer and uh, the link we're looking for is called rubyinstaller.org downloads and what you want to download is this version of Ruby here. You can go ahead and, li and download uh, the slightly more later version but the problem with this version is that it is much more prone to not working. You have to manually go in and manage some dependencies. Uh, so if you want to avoid uh, having to deal with dependencies, I'd advise you do this. Uh, so something else to note, my machine has never kind of seen the daylight of Ruby. Uh, so I'm doing this for the first time as well. So it's probably best if you follow me. So just download this. Save it. So while that's downloading, you will also need the development environment for your downloaded Ruby installer. Uh, note this is only for Windows, not for Linux. So we're just going to go ahead and download the dev kit. So if you have a look here, this dev kit is to be used with Ruby 1.8.7 or 193, and 193 is the one we're using. So we're going to download this one as well. Again, let that download. And the other thing we're going to need, the final download, is the IDE. Now the IDE that I want to use, uh, which many people may not be very keen on using, uh, isn't a free ID. It's called a um, Ruby Mine. So just go and download that as well. Now let me explain why I'm downloading Ruby Mine, a uh, a non-free ID. I've used IDEs uh, like Eclipse and NetBeans, which are free to use, and you can download net uh, plugins for them as well, which would allow you to use. Ruby as well as various other of Ruby's frameworks such as RSpec. The reason why I'm downloading RubyBind is simply because I've used all three and I just love the way RubyMine works. It's an ID that just makes life so much easier. Uh, so if you can get it, get it. That said, when you download RubyMine, it comes with a free 30 day trial anyway. And within this trial period, I think this period is more than enough to get to love this IDE but also learn the necessary Ruby uh, foundations of RSpec to actually get you writing test uh, eventually on your own. So go ahead and download this as well. So something else to note is that naturally you need a license to actually use uh, this IDE once it's expired. Uh, there's a, there's a small chance maybe a university or wherever you're kind of studying they might actually provide you with a free license. That said, uh, there are various places online um, that can actually get a license for free that other people are quite freely giving out. Uh, so I'll just let all three download and then we can pick up from there. Right, so it looks like all my downloads have now completed. So what we now need to do is first run the Ruby installer. So let's run that first. So just uh, choose your language. Uh, it's very straightforward, uh, except the license. 
uh, do have a quick read of this I've already read this before it's important when you install Ruby make sure that you tick all of these boxes they just ensure that you uh, make the necessary associations but more importantly they make sure that you add Ruby to your class bar that's probably the most important part of this installation uh, do not forget to take this otherwise it's going to cause you a little bit of problems later on so once you've installed just press finish uh, just close the wizard so the next thing we now need to do is extract or rather we now need to install the dev kit uh, the dev kit is basically just an extract really so we run it and it tells us to extract to a location uh, so I personally like to extract to my C drive so I'm just gonna uh, go in there uh, make a new folder in there and I'm just gonna call it um, Ruby Dev uh, set that as the folder and then just extract in there so now that the extract is done we need to now navigate uh, using Windows Explorer to where we extracted the dev kit so if I go into my C drive, Ruby Dev, and just click on there just to make sure it's all there. So there's everything there, right? What we now need to do is, and this is an important note, when we ran the Ruby installer, that effectively installed Ruby on our machine, including by installing the path to Ruby. By extracting the Ruby Dev extract into our C drive, we now need to effectively get them both talking to each other. Uh, because at the moment they aren't, they're almost isolated from each other in that the Ruby has definitely been added to our machine uh, in our path but the development environment or if you like the libraries and the classes uh, in particular the testing libraries and classes for Ruby they're not talking to each other yet so we now need to dive into a little bit of command window uh, console to do that so a really quick way of doing that is just highlighting over Ruby dev if you press shift and then right click it gives you a couple more options and what we want to do is we want to open the command window here it's just a quick way of opening a command window for that given directory and we need to run the following commands we need to run dk space uh, oops, sorry it's dk uh, full stop uh, rb init press enter what's that what's now it's done is it's basically identified that there's a Ruby installer and it's found so that's a good indication that your dev kit and your Ruby are now talking to each other but you still haven't installed the dev kit and to do that all you do is Ruby uh, sorry it's dk dot rb install and that's now effectively installed the dev kit for your Ruby so we are now one step closer to making sure that we have uh, Ruby and the dev kit installed on our machines so the next thing to do is just to make sure that Ruby was definitely installed so one way of doing that is if we just do um, Ruby minus V minus V standing for version and hit enter it should print out your version of Ruby in fact let's try that in a new co console window So that's now effectively given us our version of Ruby that we're using. If you also type in gem minus v, that should also give you the version of gem you're using. Now let me explain what gem is. Gem is effectively a manager to manage various things uh, in which Ruby is one of them. So if you consider Ruby being kind of like a, a folder inside a uh, a bigger folder, the bigger folder being gem. Gem allows you to manage various things uh, which you can install uh, via gem. So the next thing we need to do now is knowing that gem is a package manager, uh, again let me iterate, gem allows you to install other components uh, which can integrate with our Ruby framework. We can use gem to install various other components and one of these components we're going to install is RSpec and it's actually quite straightforward to use all you do is say gem install and then you give the name of the component that you're trying to install in essence in the Ruby world these components are referred to as gems so the gem that we're trying to install is called RSpec and hit enter 
Now this could take some time depending on your network. Uh, you might be behind a proxy for instance, uh, but it shouldn't take too long. Right, so it looks like it installed gem without any issues. Sorry, it looks like it installed RSpec without any issues. So again, just to make sure we've got it installed, we can do a RSpec minus V. Again, minus V standing for version. So it's told us that version 3.0.2 is installed on my machine. So as long as you've checked uh, a Ruby version, a gem version, and an RSpec version, and all three come back with the version, that's a really good indication that you were able to install your Ruby installer and you were able to install your dev kit as well as RSpec and all of them are effectively talking to each other so this is a really good indication that so far nothing uh, wrong uh, has happened right so now that we've got effectively the back end of, uh, of our machine set up we now need to start looking into our IDE so let's install our IDE which we downloaded earlier So again, just the usual stuff. Uh, next, uh, make sure you have a read of this. Again, I've read it. I agree. Uh, default location is fine. You can create a shortcut if you like. I'll create one. Uh, yep, that's fine. And once you've reached this screen, uh, just say run Ruby and click finish. So when you see the screen, uh, well, because it's the first time I'm doing this, I am installing a brand new fresh machine. Uh, I don't have any information to provide, so I'm just going to say uh, I don't have any previous version of Ruby mine, and I don't want to import any settings, and just say OK. So when you see the screen, uh, if you have a license key, then yeah, go ahead and populate it. But if you don't, just hit the evaluate for free uh, 30 days, and that would gain you access entry. Uh, at any point, you can come back to the screen and evaluate if you have a key. Again, like I said, uh, you can get keys uh, online. There are many people who are almost giving out for absolutely nothing. Uh, again, make sure you read this. Uh, I've had a quick uh, read of it before, since I've used it on other machines. So just to note, while you're using the trial version, uh, the only restriction is just the time. It will expire after 30 days, but within this 30 days you're not limited to functionality. You can use Rubyman uh, however you wish. So here, uh, this is just effectively saying what kind of a look you want for Rubymine. Again, I just go with the defaults. So one of the great things about Rubymine is it kind of almost recognizes everything you have installed on your machine so you really don't have to do a lot to get it up and running after installing it provided you've got Ruby and the dev kit already installed which we've already done so on this screen all, just uh, hit the create new project button and here give your project a name so I'm just gonna say uh, RSpec concept okay then so let's have a look so here what we're going to do is to right click new and let's create a directory let's just call this source in this right in this directory again right click new and we are going to create an RSpec test template so give your uh, template a name so actually let me explain this in a bit the file name is the name of your test so we're just gonna say you know what my example spec is actually a pretty good name considering this is just going to be a proof of concept just to make sure everything is hooked up and running properly the behavior name is effectively the description of your entire test so I'm gonna call this uh, my f uh, very first R spec test uh, class if you like and the it should is effectively the test. Another way to think of it is the behavior name is the name of the number of tests. And the it should are one of many tests that you can have in your class. So again, I'm going to call this uh, first test of many. Okay, that. 
And what it's done is it's basically created a really basic aspect test that pretty much doesn't really do anything. Um, so in this video, I'm not going to go into heavy detail of what all this uh, syntax means because I think that's probably going to be outside the scope of this video. In this video, we are more interested in just setting uh, something up and just getting it up and running. So I'm just going to remove that line. And in here, I'm just going to write the following. Puts, which is another way of saying print out this line. And then I'm going to provide a string value here. So I'm just going to say first test passed. Nothing else. And to run this, all you do is right click, run, and provided you get an output similar to this where, where you have something along the lines of uh, the system out which you asked for, along with an actual test uh, result, then this is a hundred percent proof that you have correctly set up your environment and you are ready to write RSpec tests. So let's quickly highlight what we've done. We downloaded three different EXEs. We downloaded the Ruby installer for Windows, we downloaded the dev kit for Ruby, and we downloaded an IDE called Ruby Mine. We then installed the Ruby installer, which effectively set up the path in our class path. So another way to check that is, uh, for those who don't know, if you just go into your CMD window and if you just type in set, it's a really cool uh, uh, trick that I use. It's, it's, it's not new or anything. Uh, this has been around uh, forever now. But, but, but typing in set and hitting enter, it actually prints out all your paths. So Ruby should be here somewhere. Uh, and here it is. Here is my Ruby in my path. It's just a really quick way of setting all your Oh, sorry, it's a quick way of seeing or observing all your uh, set path variables. So when we installed uh, the Ruby installer and then the dev kit, we ran a few commands just to make sure uh, that the dev kit was uh, picked up by Ruby and that it were both talking to each other. After that, we installed uh, Ruby mine. And really quickly, we didn't really have to care about setting up any build paths or any properties. RubyMine is really clever and it kind of did all of that for us. We went straight in, created a really basic project. We created a directory inside that project. And then we created an RSpec test uh, from a template via right click. So right click new uh, RSpec test template, which just populated uh, or rather which built a skeleton for a very basic test. We removed the default true uh, statement and instead put in this uh, print to console statement. And when we ran this, it effectively just printed out what we said it would print out. Uh, it gave us a number of uh, examples uh, really quickly. Whenever you have an it block in your describe block, an it block is effectively a ver test or it is a test. So another way to think of it is this class now has one, two, three tests. So if I were to run this, it'd say three examples, uh, zero failures, three passed if you like. And that's it for this video, folks. Uh, if you enjoy my videos and find they bring you some new knowledge or insight into writing web driver aspect tests, then please subscribe and rate. If you have any questions or video suggestions, then please leave a comment below. Considering this is the very first video and there are still uh, many few things to come, I'm just going to say a few, I'm not going to spoil anything. But we will be going over WebDriver, we will be going over stuff like um, assertions. Uh, we'll see how assertions are done uh, from a Ruby's perspective. We'll go over all the usual stuff, locators, pop-ups, uh, various things. So yeah, like I was saying, if you have any questions or video suggestions, then please leave a comment below. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.